How's it going, everybody? So today, I got to thinking, and this has come up a lot in Hot Wheels uh, collector groups and stuff like that. How many super treasure hunts do they make? So, kind of got me wondering. And what everybody goes off of is the limited production of treasure hunts in the past and then like convention productions now, RLC productions now, and stuff like that. So, here's kind of my thought, which is all just best guess because nobody knows except, you know, Mattel high up people who make that decision. You know, because it costs more to make a super than it costs to make a regular mainline. Probably. But we look at the 1995 treasure hunt sets. Everybody knows that there is 10,000 of each car produced. That's what they said. Now, like I say, there could be uh, prototypes out there that weren't counted in that 10,000. Personally, I think there's prototypes that aren't counted in production releases. But that's just me. Who knows? So that would tell us automatically we know that they make more than 10,000 super treasure hunts. You know? And then you got regular treasure hunts. You know, then you go to 1996, they increased that to 25,000 per model. Okay, for, for regular treasure hunts, because Supers didn't come out until 2007, I believe. So, that says 25,000, and that was in 1996. So that was like 26, you know, ish years ago. So I still think they make more than 25,000 supers. Okay, so going off that number, if you go into like the next best thing, you get your RLCs, right? Okay, well we know they made 20,000 of these drag buses. That's what the sticker says. And they have 25,000 that they made of the 1996 treasure hunts. Now, from 1997 moving forward, they never released how many of what they produced. You know, and then you had them change over time. You had it where it was treasure hunts, and then it went to a regular treasure hunt, and then the upgraded supermodel of that version. Then they started just creating random treasure hunts out there at the circle and the flame, and then the supers were totally something different. And it just takes off from there. That's that's a whole nother ballpark. But what I'm talking about today is uh, how many supers do I think are out there? Well, I think after 1996, they probably started producing, I don't know, maybe like, they could have kept the 25,000 and just not put them out there. I don't know why they wouldn't, you know, why they wouldn't just say they're making 25,000 because it would probably make it more attractive you know to collectors and just not saying that so therefore we can make a good guess that they probably did increase it from 25,000 but we don't know sometimes people just don't put it on the cars or they don't put it out there because they don't want to who knows but let's assume that for argument's sake we'll say they they we'll say they increase it a little bit so instead of making like 30,000 35,000 from 1997 forth. You know, and then as they make different things and all that, it could change. Now, I think Supers started in 2007. You know, that's when they started them. So, you know, they probably produced quite a bit of them. That's my thought. And I think they've produced more and more from 2007 to present 2022. That's just my guess. I think they probably, because they're trying to pull people in. You know, you got to sell that product. You got to make it desirable, get those collectors coming in. And then the business makes more money for like market cap when it comes to their stocks and stuff. So this one being 20000 you have to pay to have a membership for that. And I think this car is probably going for like $25, $30 on the RLC website. I don't know. I'm not an RLC member. I simply just buy them second market. I don't want to go through all the hassle of the RLC website. It sounds like a total pain. This one, everybody knows, is the Nismo they just released. 30,000 of these they released. And people are still paying 25, 30 bucks for these to resell them at the $100 mark. Nice little flip. All right. But you're getting three, four cars to flip. Okay. So you make a couple hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks. 
Okay. I mean, side hustle. All right. I got my own side hustles, but all right. But, you know, you go in 30,000 of these. And this is exclusively through the website. So that leads me to believe that supers are probably being produced at 50,000 per car, at least, just off of that. You know, and then, I mean, like uh, like convention vehicles. They, they had them going for, um, you know, a good example is the uh, 29th collector set, which I have three of those cars now. Um, that are five percent production or less. Super cool. But you had the Dotson Wagon twenty four hundred produced. You know you got the Power Wagon, a purple one. You know they made two thousand of those. You know those were way low. You know now they're producing four thousand on the conventions, and this one had sixty two hundred on a convention. You know, so they had two of these that released at 4,000 and two released at 6,200, which hence is why the RLCs are going from 20,000 production to 30,000 production, or they're just releasing some that aren't numbered at all, in which case you could estimate those are at 40 or 50,000, which you're still paying $25 to get. You know, so that could still put it at like supers being even higher than 50,000. You know, since they're increasing the production of, of everything, the convention cars or the production is being increased, RLCs, the production is being increased, uh, so forth. And I'm sure that supers are increased because why would somebody pay $25, $30 for an RLC car? You know, or, you know, I don't know how the convention cars go, if they buy them or if they get them for, you know, when they purchase their tickets. I don't, I haven't been to a convention yet. But that leads me to believe that supers. You know, they're, and plus, like, these ones, obviously, we all know, are a lot more difficult to make. You know, it costs them more money to make these versus a Super. A Super, Spectra Flame Paint, throw some rubber tires on there, good to go. I still think they're probably producing, my guess on a low would be 50,000 Supers on a low. You know, and then the regular treasure hunts with the flames that they're throwing out there, I think they're making, like, 100,000 of those or more, easy. I mean, yeah. But I would say supers, I would say on a low, probably 50,000 on a high. My guess, somewhere, I mean, they could be making 100,000 supers. I don't know. Um, I would guess, like, just like a reserve guess, I don't know, like 75,000 supers, give or take, on a high. That'd be my guess, you know. Uh, we have no idea, but based on what I just kind of went over here, and the regular treasure hunts, I'm thinking 100,000 plus with it to make it on those. But that's just my guess, you know, a little bit of fun. Like, how, how many supers do y'all think they make? You know, that's my guess. Um, I think they probably increase the amount of supers production per year. So, the newer supers that are released that people pay that premium for because it's a new super, it's... I mean, they probably made more of those than they did the ones back in 2007, 2008, but I don't know. And that's just because they're increasing the amount of convention, the amount of RLC, and so forth. But that goes back to, like, why I, I'm, collect, I'm a numbers collector, you know, I like collecting numbers. But that's another, that's another reason, so this one's, you know, I, I, I actually started labeling my uh, cars like that. But I do those and I build my collections based on low 5% production. Now the numbers don't match. I mean for this set that I own, all the numbers match. All four cars are number 69. But they can have the dinner sticker on the Mustang and you can have signatures on them, things like that. Make them, like I said, more, more rare, more desirable to certain collectors. And out of the Hot Wheel world, there's a lot more resellers and a lot more people in it for the money than there are actual collectors, in my personal opinion as we said today. I think there are way more population of, of Hot Wheels, you know, the Hot Wheels community, you know, just like in the US maybe. I would say like maybe, shoot, like 20% of that, maybe 30% of that's actual collectors, maybe. And like the other, you know, 70% or whatever, I think a lot of that's re like resellers and people buying 
to to sell them later, you know, because it's an expensive hobby if you want the rare, tough to find cars, you know. And there are guys out there that have them, but I know very less collectors, very few less collectors, and I do that people that are always just selling them all the time, you know, and all that. You know, I get it if you like, you know, sell a car because you got, you know, a more rare version of that car. Like, for instance, I put a Golf 917K on one of the grooves. My ask price was 400 bucks. It's about the going rate. Um, why am I putting that on there? Because I have two other 917Ks that are low production numbers that are 5% or less, which I paid a lot more for those. A lot more. Um, but, you know, it's cool. So it's like you give it back to the community, but I also wanted those in my personal collection. But now that I have cars that are way more rare, number-wise, I don't need this other one that's just a random number you know and there's 4,000 produced so this number I think was like I don't know like 2101 or something but now I have numbers that are like 55 and lower you know so so I'll sell it you know I mean but most of uh folks out there are just in it for the money it seems like but there are some folks that collect you know and you know you I mean people know who they are because the word probably gets around and you see their collections when they share them and you're like wow you know, that's really cool. But that's my thought. I'm thinking on a low, 50,000 supers, but I'm thinking they make more than that. You know, I'm thinking around 75,000 supers is my number that I would stick to. And then with regular Circle Flame treasure hunts, I'm thinking around 100,000. You know, I guess. And as the numbers go up, they're going to increase them. Which leads me to still say, as I am ending the video here, to collect these lower numbers. Um, collect the ones that have, you know, signed autographs, you know, and stuff like that. Because if you get really into it, I mean, I don't know if they're increasing value money-wise later down the road. I imagine they they would, you know, but I don't know. But they'd be more and more difficult to find, and then your collection becomes more and more rare. And if you're in it for collecting, at least even partial of it being collecting, uh, great. You know, you have a great rare collection. Like, I've seen a couple, um, like, what are they, General Lees, Johnny Lightning General Lees, a Raw a guy had in the group, and a White Lightning a guy had in the group, both of which were looking at $800 or more for those cars, each. And I was like, man, and you never see them. Do I want them? Yeah. Am I going to get them right now? No, because I can't. But I do uh, take those photos. I will add those photos to my books I'll note who the owners are in the future and if I want to buy them I'll reach out to them see if they're interested in selling and I build my collection that way build it on rarity that's what I like I like walking into my room where my cars are and uh, well I don't really have a room for me but working on it but I like walking in there knowing like man there ain't no other collection like this probably within 50 miles of where I live which is pretty cool but alright guys, yeah, I was just sharing that. What do y'all think? How many do you think they produce? Do you care? I don't know. It's just an interesting thought. But uh, yeah, you know, have a good one and uh, talk to you later on. Peace.